I much prefer dogs, but I don't actually know a lot of people with dogs. I know more people with cats than I, I know with dogs. Anyway, I really like the art on the chopsticks. That's why I got them. You know, they had cute chopsticks that had dogs on them. I would, I'd be all over that. Or they were like chickens or ducks on them. Oh boy. So, in case I uh, decide to upload this to YouTube, comment below what your favorite animal is. Or rather, what animal do you think is the most cute? Again, I love my cat. I have a cat. His name is Mongo. He's a Maine Coon. He's not one of those humongous ones that you see all over Google image uh, searches and such for Maine Coons. But, uh, he's a very large cat. And he's not fat at all. You know, he, he probably he eats all day, or at least reasonably so for any kind of cat. But, you know, he's, he's pretty lithe as cats should be and uh yeah and I, I tend to take for granted his size you know to me he's he's just mongo but when I go to like another friend's house that have cats and I compare the sizes of their cats to my cat and I realize mongo is like usually at least twice the size of, an, of a regular cat at least And then I come home, and I see Mongo just like, lounging around usually, but he'll get up and run to me, throw himself against me, and I mean, look at this guy, you know, follow me around so I can uh, give him food, which I would say at least, uh, you know, 78% of the time he already has food. Yeah. Alright. I think uh I'll add some uh some happy little trees right here. But not too many. So the other day, a co-worker of mine had asked me, Why are you so antisocial? And you know, at first I was taken aback. Not because, you know, I didn't realize that I was so antisocial. I've always known this. But rather, 
How is it that this guy doesn't understand that not everyone is a social butterfly? That everyone, uh, that not everyone likes to be social. But then, you know, I, I realized who it was that had asked. And I was like, oh, you know, that's, that's okay. Totally understand now. So, you know, my answer to him was just, I just am. You know, some people, some people are born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline, you know. I, I don't know, I, uh, I love my friends. I love hanging out with them, spending time with them. But if I don't know you that well at all, I much prefer to, you know, uh, kind of take a break from you. Because new people generally stress me out. Oh, but you work in retail. Yeah, I get stressed out from interacting with strangers a lot, fairly easily. It doesn't take much to trigger an anxiety attack for me. So yeah, it doesn't take much to trigger an anxiety attack. I have to take time away from dealing with people. And, you know, I would actually prefer if I didn't get so panicky about it. You know, it, it tends to hold me back from the things that I want to do. But as it is, you know, all I can do is find ways to cope with it and understand my limits. Just some uh, little happy little cosp of trees, content in their little group right here over the hillside. Some uh, some fir trees. When I was younger, I used to have a lot of trouble growing uh, fir trees. And it was, uh, I don't know. There's nothing particularly difficult about them. You know, it's just kind of draw some slanty bits, you know, this way and that way, all the way down. And, you know, it's not long until you have something that resembles fir tree. We have a fair amount where I live. Not as much as like the red cedars or the willow trees and oak trees and such. But we do have a fair amount. It's, uh, there's a lot, a, a, a decent, I would say a decent amount of forest. You know, we we do have, you know, a metropolitan area. You know, there's a lot of people that live here. It's a, it's almost a proper city at this point. And I remember when I was uh when I was uh, growing up, it a lot of people would not have considered where I live a city, and that's and that's changed now. That has changed quite a bit. And it's really amazing to me to hear my parents talk about how this area used to be even before I was born. You know, there 
it wasn't uncommon for people to still ride horses around. But now if you see people on horseback, it's like, whoa, what the heck are you doing? This is where people drive the cars, you know? It's, it's become very much modernized. There's some, uh, I would say, relics of the past. One of my favorite restaurants to dine at, or just to eat food from, because, you know, I've, I've gone there for years, for 20 years. It's Monty's Penguin. And a lot of people will ask me, you know, to describe Monty's Penguin. Well, what makes it so special? You know, what kind of restaurant is it? Uh, and, you know, I don't really have a easy, straightforward answer to give, because, you know, it's... It's like every restaurant you've ever been to, but at the same very unique still. So it's it's kind of like being at home a little bit. It's, you know, the, the kind of food that they have there. Or at least the food that I grew up with is what they have to serve. So, you know, they have stuff like hot dogs and hamburgers. But they also have stuff like, you know, um, like chuck wagon and collards and stuff like that. You know, very, uh, very much home-cooked meal style. Uh, I would say, I would say it's like diner food, but I've never really eaten at a diner before. The only diner that is actually around me, I don't think I've ever seen it open. And, you know, it was talk there was always talk about, like, restoring it to its uh, former glory, essentially. And, uh, you can tell that this place was really old because, um, Because it, it, it had a sign advertising, you know, we have AC. And I'm thinking, wow, how crazy old must this place be for AC to be a welcome commodity? You know, how many other people don't have AC for this to be a selling point? Like, hey, come eat here because we have AC. And yeah, that's, to me, that's, that's pretty crazy, right? Uh, I don't know. Anyway. And, you know, a lot of people say it gets really hot here in the South, and I, I guess it does. You know, it, it's all relative, I think. It's, uh, it's, it's all relative. Now, some people would say, you know, 60 degrees is hot. And I'm like, no. I mean, it's not cold, but it's, it's, it's not warm either, you know. I mean, I guess you could comfortably subsist in 60 degree weather. But it's like, if you have the choice to, you probably wouldn't. You know, 70 is... I would say like 73, 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit is like my comfort zone. I like sleeping in the cold, but uh, I don't really like being cold, which is uh, kind of crazy. Well, I guess it's not crazy because it's what I'm used to, you know. You know, my uh, my ancestors, for example, they don't really have a lot of heating. They, uh, it's pretty cold there, like, almost all the time. Well, on my mother's side, at least. You know, on my father's side, you know, that's all islanders. So, like, the coldest it gets is probably, like, 65, maybe. And... You know, that's, that's still not cold, cold. So, but does it ever get, you know, cold where I live? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, for uh, right now, I think, it's actually below freezing outside. You know, you, you wouldn't think of, you know, the south being cold necessarily, but, yeah. The southern U.S. can get pretty cold. You know, it's not like 
our winter weeks are all going to be in the uh, low 20s.